Hey there. In this video, I'll be talking about how to expose and color grade C-Log3 footage in cameras like the R5, the R6, and the R7. So if you're looking for that kind of information, you're in the right place. I'm currently shooting on the R5, and that's what I'll be using for these demos, but it'll be very applicable to the R6 and the R7 where it's pretty similar. All right, so there's two situations I wanna demonstrate, and one of which is this right here, which is more like a run and gun situation. I'm filming myself, I'm outside, I'm not using any lights or modifiers or anything like that. I'm using natural light, and I'm trying to get the best exposure in the camera. And before we get into the details, a couple of things here. First of all, there's no right way to do anything. <laughs> uh, uh, photography and videography is very subjective, and so you, what I wanna emphasize during this is I'll just show you what I do most of the time and give you some ideas and things to practice with. That being said, there's a couple of things you wanna keep in mind when you are filming outside especially, is that you wanna just make sure you protect your highlights. And I don't use like a gray card and things like that when I'm outside, which I will show you how to use that stuff inside with controlled lighting. But the, the biggest thing for me is don't blow out your highlights because I think there's nothing that looks more amateur and sort of DSLR-like, if, if you can use that term, than blowing out your highlights. So that's one thing for me personally that I really try to do. So I'll show you how to do that and get the proper exposure outside. But first of all, let me show you some settings in the camera. So let me hop around behind the camera. All right, let's jump into the menu. And a couple things I wanna point out. First of all, make sure you're using the right frame rate and resolution and codec. So in all these cameras, I like to shoot the oversampled mode, which is 4K fine, as you see here in the R5, and also 4K fine in the R7. And so in the R5 here, we have to make sure that we have 4K HQ mode enabled to get the oversampled 8K to 4K mode, which is 4K fine. In the R7, you can just choose it when you go into the uh, selection menu. So let's go in here. I like to shoot in 4K fine in UHD most of the time in 24 frames a second in IPB. Now, if I was doing a lot of fast moving subjects, maybe all I would be better, but generally I don't really need that. I'm shooting in IPB because I save a lot on space. And the R6 and the R7 don't have all eye in 4K24, so that's fine. Okay, so other things I wanna show you here is if you go to the third tab over and you go to Canon Log Settings, let's check out some of the things in here. Make sure you have Canon Log turned on and we're turning it on with C-Log3. C-Log3 is gonna give you the most dynamic range, a lot more than C-Log. So go under View Assist, make sure you have this turned on. And what this does is it kind of puts like a display LUT on the screen. So it adds more contrast and saturation, makes it easier to judge exposure and image. It doesn't bake it into the file and it doesn't affect the expo exposure meters and stuff that you're using on the camera. And lastly on the screen, color space, you want to use cinema gamut, that gives you the best color space and also, also allows you to match other Canon cameras really easy. So make sure you choose that. Lastly, we're gonna be using the histogram for judging exposure. So if you go over to the seventh one here and go down to shooting info display, and we're gonna to go to histogram display, set on brightness. Now, generally I keep this set on small because it takes up a lot of real estate on the screen when you're using large, but I'm gonna turn on large just for display purposes here so you can um, you know, see it a lot better while I'm doing the demonstration. All right, let's back out of this. And sometimes you have to hit the info button on the back to sort of cycle between all the different, you know, display options, but make sure you have the histogram, which is that graph on the upper right. So let's use that and we'll get started and show you how to get exposure. Now let's talk about getting exposure using the histogram. And before we do that, I just wanna say that one of the biggest ways you can make your life easier in terms of color grading and getting really good footage and it's kind of an obvious one, but get it as close to right in camera as possible. That'll make your life so much easier and make your grades even better. So as I was saying, I really wanna make sure I protect my highlights. I don't wanna blow them out because that definitely does not look cool. And if we can push the image a little bit higher up into the highlights, we'll actually get cleaner shadows. And so in C-Log3 and these cameras, they have a lot of lat latitude in the highlights. So that's what we're gonna do. So what I wanna stress in this situation, in this video is most of us get started and we're using this guy right here, the exposure meter. Don't look at this thing anymore. I don't even use this anymore. Uh, I would probably, I should probably just disable it. And what we're gonna be using here is, as I said, the histogram. And I, I set this up to large, like I said before, but I usually have it small so I can see more of the screen and I can eyeball it. All right, so what's going on with this histogram is this is a graph on the left are the shadows, on the right are the highlights. So you can see there's no highlights that are getting destroyed because it's not shooting up. I can show you what that looks like. So if I open up my ND filter and overexpose the image, you can see that there's way too many highlights and they start to blow up on the right there. And similarly, if I stop down my aperture, you can see everything bunching up on the left, and that'll mean I'm uh, crushing out my shadows. 
So what you wanna do, like I said in my last video, hopefully you got to see that, you don't wanna use your shutter speed that's locked in, you don't wanna change your ISO, I'm at the base of 800 because I'm in C-Log3. You wanna adjust your exposure with lighting, well, I can't really do that, I'm using the sun, NDs and aperture. So pick your aperture, let's say I wanna shoot at 2.8, and I look at my histogram there, and you can see that as I adjust my variable ND filter in front of the lens here, you can see I'm just right there, I'm starting to push up a little bit, on the highlights. So I'm actually just gonna stop down just a little bit. There we go, two thirds of a stop. And now you can see that my histogram is all kind of in the middle and I'm not losing any exposure on the highlights and the shadows. So this is perfect. This is what we'll color grade. So we'll take this inside and I'll show you how I work this footage. So I'm back inside now. And before we get into grading that footage, I want to get one other clip and that's gonna be something like this, something that's inside with controlled lighting. And we'll get the proper exposure using a different method. And I've talked about this in several videos, especially a lot of my test videos. I, I sort of you know, talk about how I do this, but I wanna show you specifically how you do it with a gray card and using zebras in the R5, but same for the R6 and the R7. So if you don't have one of these gray cards, definitely pick one up. They're super inexpensive. I'll leave that link down below. Also, if you're interested in getting a color checker, these are invaluable tools. I made a very detailed video about how to use this to get really, really accurate footage. I'll leave that link down below too, but we're gonna use the gray card here. So when you're setting up your camera to use zebras, you need to know what zebra level to use in your camera. And that will be determined by the manufacturer and the log profile that you're using. So if you take a look at this graph here, for C-Log and C-Log 3, we're looking at the point where the graph crosses the zero, that's middle gray. And so it's roughly at 35%. And so we're gonna use 35%. And so in the, you know, in the R5, then the other cameras, you can only change the zebras by 5%. So that's the closest one we can get is 35%. So that's what we're gonna set the zebra to. And that's what we're gonna aim at getting the zebra to expose properly on the gray card. So let me show you how that works. All right, so now you're looking at the back of the screen of the R5 and I can't use my recorder because the zebras don't go through. So I have my gray card hung up on the chair there. If you have a subject, have them just hold it where they're gonna be so you get the light that's accurate for where the subject is being lit. But I'm behind the camera so I have to sit up on the chair. So let me show you how to do this with the zebras. And so we go in the menu and we're gonna go over to the seventh tab down to zebra settings. And we are going to set the zebra level one to 35%, as I was saying, because that'll give us proper exposure for uh, middle gray on C-Log3. And then we go up and turn our zebras on. So zebras on, 35%. I'm gonna back out of this. And you'll see the zebras on the screen. Those are those um, striped lines or <laughs> zebra lines. And so we gotta pick our exposure. So let's say we want uh, our aperture. We have to, let's say we want F4. And so that's too dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise my key light, which I have on a remote here, until our zebras cover our gray card. So there you go, now that's properly exposed at F4. All right, so now that we got our <laughs> exposure right, let me hop in here. And this should be properly exposed, so what we'll do is we'll grade this image. All right, so I brought the clips into the computer here and I use Final Cut Pro for editing. It doesn't really matter what NLE or editing software you use, they all kind of have similar tools. And I can't do a full rundown of how to use Final Cut Pro in this video, it was well beyond the scope of this video. But what we wanna do is kinda of just show you some basic stuff here to sort of give you some confidence and some ideas and inspiration and stuff just to like get motivated to start doing your own grading because it's really not that hard to do. As I said, there are so many ways to do this and probably everyone who watches this is gonna disagree with how I do this and that's fine. And the other thing to keep in mind when you're grading is that don't try to make every clip look the same. And I think I fell into this early where I tried to make everything look the same because, you know, a sunny day looks different than a cloudy day, than when it's raining, than when it's nighttime, than when you're shooting in a studio. So all that kind of stuff. So let's jump into it. So I have my two clips in here. And what I want to do here first is just find like a hero clip. Find a clip, or a, sorry, a frame inside the clip that you want to grade. So let's pick something here. <laughs> All right, there you go, we'll just choose this, doesn't really matter. Uh, but you wanna pick something that's representative of that clip and that you can color grade because it'll be a representation of that entire clip. So there you go. <clears throat> okay, so inside the inside uh, Final Cut here, you have the scopes on the left and there are lots of different kinds of scopes. I like the waveform and the RGB parade. There are lots of different ones you can choose here. This is just what I've gotten used to and what I like. As I said, there's so many ways you can do this. So if you use RGB parade, 
Each one is the red, green, and blue channel, and in each channel you see from left to right corresponds with left to right on the image. So for example, this peak that you see here in the red, green, and blue is probably going to be the sky over here. If you look at this peak here, and then maybe this smaller peak here, that's probably the sky over here, and then maybe the, uh, this bright part of the greenhouse over here. And then over here on the right hand side we have our wheels. I like wheels. Again, you can use, there's so many different ways you can do this. We have a wheel for a global, which is the entire image, the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. And for each wheel, we can adjust the exposure on the right, the saturation on the left, and then the colors. We can push those around as well. Probably won't be pushing colors around very much in this video. Uh, as I said, really like a basic correction to get us started. So to do this, let's take a look first at the image and you kind of sort of see what's going on here. One thing I want to point out is we did expose correctly, but we were right up at the top and that's okay. Now, if you blew up, if you have the highlights blown out, you'll see that there'll be like flat parts at the top here at your highlights. But you can see we kept all the information. Actually, we were below 100, which is fantastic. So when you're grading, uh, you'll often hear people say, bring the highlights up to 100 and bring the shadows down to zero. And that's true for a lot of situations if you're in high dynamic range situations. But you could be in a situation where you don't have bright white and you don't have complete black. But here we have a sky which is gonna be close to 100. And then this probably this area behind me here, behind the flowers, is probably this area that you see that's dark between all the different channels. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to first take the highlights and then bring them up to 100, which they're pretty much there. And sometimes you can push them a little bit higher, but if I do push them higher, you can see like the sky up here and also there kind of starts to blow out. So we just want to be careful about that. You can also see on the scope it flattens out, so we know we're blowing it out. Sometimes you can push it a little bit above, above 100 if you need to, but we'll probably keep it around 100. And then I'm going to bring the shadows down to close to zero because, as I said, we do have these this dark shadow, which is almost black back here. It's so dark. So right now what we did is, as I said, we raised the highlights and we lowered the shadows a little bit. And basically we added contrast. Contrast is the difference between light and dark. So if I toggle the wheels on and off, you can see, okay, we started with this log image. And all of a sudden we have contrast. So that looks like a solid start. And then what I want to do is use the midtones. I usually bring them down just a little bit. It depends on what's going on in the scene and which log curve you're using and all that stuff. So when I bring this down, I kind of just add a little bit more contrast, a little more punch to the image. Again, this is all by taste, and I'm going to be going back and forth and playing with these quite a bit. The next thing, we need to add some saturation. So I'm going to add saturation to the whole image. Again, once you get really nerdy about this, you can add saturation to each individual thing. But we're going to add some saturation, and I think one thing that I fell into the trap of early with color grading is oversaturating everything. So you want to be really careful about that. So then once I see my highlights and my shadows are sort of in the right place, then I sort of just play with the midtones and play with the saturation and get my image. So also keep in mind we're delivering this because if you put it out to YouTube, it often takes out some saturation and some contrast. So you just want to be careful about that. I kind of go a little bit overboard because it kind of gets knocked down. But again, the best thing you can do when you are done color grading and uploading is watch it on whatever platform you're going to upload it to check out on multiple kinds of devices and those sorts of things. So as you can see, we have this basically color graded. It looks pretty solid. And if I turn it off, this is log coming out of the camera and this is our color grade. Is it perfect? No, but will, will it work? Yes. So I just want to give you some, uh, some tips there. So let's go over to the inside one now. And oh, I look really, let's, uh, that looks better there. <laughs> so for this one, I grade the inside one a little bit differently and I'm not going to drag up the highlights to 100 here because there really isn't any white in the scene here. So I'm going to drag them up a little bit. And what I'm seeing here, this main peak, which I see right here, this is going to be my skin tones. And what I want to do here is I want to drag the shadows down to basically black because there are some really dark spots behind me. I want that to be dark. And again, this is personal preference. Like usually you've seen my talking head in, in my studio. I like it a little darker, I like it a little bit moodier. So. I also don't have a high key light situation. I have one key light um, off to my side and I usually have a backlight too. So over here, uh, as I said, I brought my shadows down. I'm gonna, before I get to the highlights because I don't have just like a bright white thing to, uh, to use here, is I'm just gonna add a little saturation just to get a better sense of what's going on in the image here. And already, man, like this is looking so good. This is out of the camera, boom. I really didn't do very much. I might pull down the midtones a little bit to make it a little bit more moody, a little bit more, you know, contrasty and stuff. Maybe bring up the saturation just a little bit if I want a little bit more of a pop. 
And then generally for this, with the skin tones, I'm aiming between 70 and 75. I think most people say 70, but because the scene's so dark, uh, I usually aim there. So again, this is ungraded and graded. And one thing I also want to point out is you can check the skin tone. So let me just show you how to do that because sometimes they're off a little bit. And so if we go over to the scopes and we choose our vector scope, this line here is the skin tone line. And you can see I'm basically right on the skin tone line. You can also zoom in. So let me show you how to do that. So if we go over here, you can go to the first tab and there's the, the transform. And if we scale this up and then hit the transform tool over here, we can actually drag the image over to my face. Sorry, I have to look at my face so up and close and personal there. But you can see you get a better sense of the skin tone line. And generally, if I need to change this, what I'll do is I will just take the midtones and drag them either towards magenta or towards green. A lot of times that's usually the issue. And if you need to reset it, you can just double click on it and reset it. So the skin tones look great um, out of this because the, the white balance is set pretty close and I was using daylight lights inside my studio here. So let's go back and just reset this and zoom out. So there you go. Uh, as I said, this is, I'm going to change it back to waveform. Um, this is kind of a pretty simple way to get a grade. Um, it, this is just basically basic correction here. I'm not really applying any sort of artistic grade to it, but as you can see, pretty easy without a lot to, to make it look good. But again, exposure is key. And I didn't mention this earlier, but getting the right white balance is also uh, really important to getting the, looking good in the camera. Of course, you can fix it if the white balance is off and that's for another video, but um, I just wanna give you some motivation and show you kind of how I do this quickly. Well, that was basically more of like a color correction than a color grade, but either way, <laughs> I just wanna share with you my basic process of how I take a log image and turn it into something that's a lot nicer and then something that you can use. Now, if you're just getting started with this and you wanna start playing with log footage, definitely practice. If you're not fully comfortable with it, don't go out and shoot a whole project for a client or for something else in log and then not know what to do with the footage. So definitely practice with this, get comfortable with it, and just have fun with it. It's great. I know a lot of people have been asking me about which LUTs I use. I don't, I just do this basically all the time. For stuff that I use all the time, like this shot here, what I'll do is after I grade it and I like the grade, I'll save it as a preset in Final Cut so I don't have to do it every single time. But as long as you get your exposure right in camera, get the white balance close, Grading it is pretty easy and it's a whole lot of fun. And uh, the more you get into it, the more little tips and tricks you'll pick up and the better you'll get and the better your images will look. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.